It seems we are not in Metropolis anymore. Yeah, I got that. The Justice League TV show is my childhood. I saw this show on repeat so many times and I wanted this as a live action movie for the longest. It had an amazing cast, the founding members of the Justice League with different points of view, but they all came together to defend Earth and fight alongside each other. There are so many episodes that we're going to talk about, but I think we should talk about, of course, the favorites and the ongoing plot in the background that leads up to the Justice League Unlimited series. To start off this talk, let's talk about the episodes Legends. It's a two-parter that gave me goosebumps when we find out the hidden truth about the justice guild certain members of the justice league get sucked into an alternative dimension when the flash runs around in a circle saving green lantern hawk girl and martian manhunter from seconds before getting crushed by lex's robot i think instead of the cosmic trail the animated series wanted to show a different way of that they can cross dimensions once the team wakes up and realizes that they aren't in the same city green lantern picks up a newspaper and realizes that they are in seaboard city martian manhunter then uses his tele telepathic powers to contact the rest of the league, but instead receives images of a nuclear destruction. When they hear alarms going off, they fight Music Master, but both teams end up fighting each other. But it isn't until the Streak sees that the Flash saves Ray Thompson from the debris. The Streak then stops everybody from fighting and they all go to their headquarters. We come to realize that this is actually Green Lantern's childhood comic book heroes, the Justice Guild, and that they watch over this city. Let's to introduce ourselves. Justice Guild, roll call. Catman. Black Siren. Green Guardsman. Tom Turbine. The Streak. These heroes are actually a play of the Justice Society of America. So let's go over the resemblance with the ripoffs. Whatever you want to call it. Streak is a ripoff of Jake Garrick the Flash. Catman is a combination of Wildcat and the Golden Age Batman, not to be confused with the actual Catman from the comics. Black Siren resembles Black Canary. The Green Guardsman is a ripoff of Alan Scott's Green Lantern. And Tom Turbine, from what people say, is like a combination of the Atom and a Golden Age Superman. And even the villains are counted. Parts. For example, the Music Master is a ripoff of the Fiddler, Sportsman is Sportsmaster, Dr. Blizzard, the Icicle, and Certain Swami, the Wizard. So upon introducing themselves, the Justice League also tells them what happened to them. And then Tom Turbine says this. I have long hypothesized that there are an infinite number of parallel dimensions, each containing its own planet Earth. Each Earth occupies the same location in space, but vibrates at a different speed. This still doesn't explain the Justice Guild comics I read when I was a kid. Perhaps the creators of those comics had a subconscious link to this Earth. What they thought was merely imagination was a psychic memory of the Justice Guild's real exploits. Tom says he's going to work on the trans-dimensional gateway and everyone else splits into teams to go fight the villains. So I want to just point something out because we're going to talk about this later. When the Streak says this to Green Lantern... Obviously the clue fire can only mean one thing. They plan to steal the fabled flame of Rasputin precious ruby necklace on loan to the Seaboard City Museum. You know your stuff. It's an honor to fight beside you. The feeling's mutual. You're a credit to your people, son. Uh, thanks. This is similar to the phrase, you're so well spoken for in today's time. The subtle racism. We will come back to this later on and explain why this is also a hint to this particular Earth and to Martian Manhunter's message. When Catman and Martian Manhunter go after Sportsman, Martian Manhunter then gets a huge vision. <laughs> Hawkgirl then sees something that makes us rethink everything and everyone. And then the episode ends. The second episode picks up with Hawkgirl telling Jon Stewart and Martian Manhunter about what she saw. So both Jon Stewart and Hawkgirl go to the graveyard and confirm what she saw. After going to the graveyard and confirming Hawkgirl's story, they end up confronting the ice cream man that never seems to stop and questions Questions? Him. He might hear you. Who? I can't say anymore. Have a nice day! Then they end up going to the library to see if they can find anything. When every book they pick up comes up empty, they end up going downstairs to find any newspaper, but they come up to a subway station. Hot Girl then realizes that the train was in the middle of a battle. When picking up the newspaper, John says it was 40 years ago since the Justice Guild comic was also written and last seen. Back at the headquarters, the heroes get tipped by the police that the villains robbed a bank. They quickly arrest the villains, and once they go back to the headquarters, Green Lantern and Hawk Girl are sitting down. They explain everything. You heard me. They are not the Justice Guild. How can you say that? This is a serious accusation, young man. Explain yourself. No. You explain this. Justice Guild killed in battle. 
It's a hoax. Some kind of sick joke. It's no joke. The real Street, Green Guardsman, Tom Turbine, they're all dead. Hello? And as soon as they tell everyone what happened... A monster's tearing up Main Street. You must hurry. If what you say is true, who or what is creating this illusion? I suggest you ask Ray. Ray? He uses his telepathic powers to show everyone what Ray really looks like. The robot then comes to the headquarters and starts attacking everyone, and the Justice Guild then end up fighting the robot. But the League fights Ray. Wait, if what they said is true, defeating Ray could destroy this reality and everything in it. Including us. We died once to save this Earth, and we can do it again. And once overwhelming him with attack after attack, the illusion starts to fade away. And they say their goodbyes to John. No. Martian Manhunter then says, He couldn't maintain the illusion. The strain was too great. But how did he get like that? The radioactive fallout from the nuclear war mutated his DNA, giving him the psychic ability to mold this world to his choosing. So he chose to recreate it with the heroes he worshipped as a child. Everyone from the city then appears and tells them about how they are thankful. After 40 years, they can return to their normal lives. Well, really, after the destruction, but you know, they are going to rebuild. But let's go back to Ray for a bit. Since he was actually older than what we thought because of the illusion and creating a WandaVision scenario for the whole city, it was the little things in the episode that kind of showed us that Ray was stuck in his past. Again, when the streak says, You're a credit to your people, son. Or even when Black Siren tells Hawkgirl, Let's let the men talk. They can talk all they like. Pointing to the gender roles and domestic ideology that the 50s and 60s norm was, these might be meaningless to somebody that isn't very analytical in a kid's TV show, but that's what hinted what era those heroes were from. It's great going back to see this and notice these things. I will not be patronized. This has to be the saddest, but yet one of the best episodes in the Justice League series I still think about today. How do you feel about this episode? What is your favorite Justice League episode? Let me know. Can I be your animation guy? Till then, see you next time.